Stream elements. Set. MRG underscore live is now live. Streaming just chatting. Mr. G. Live geography class. United States States New Mexico. Follow. Sub. Sit down. The mermaid said, Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. some New Mexico music, please. Hey, Google. Play New Mexico music.
class is about to start. You know what that means, right? You know what I want to listen to, right? You don't even have to say. You already know, don't you? Just play the song, Google. Seconds on set, 20 seconds on set. Where's G at? Get his ass in here. Mr. G. Welcome to my class. This is Sholi. Sholi! Aloha. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I just gotta go, but I got some Mentos. <coughs> so it makes everything better. <coughs> Mr. G with a donation through Stream Elements, Mentos. Mentos. I wanted to leave the uh, screensaver on YouTube as this one. Good afternoon, Mr. G. Aloha G, happy Friday. Aloha, Mrs. J. Happy Aloha Friday here in Hawaii. Every Friday is Aloha Friday. Uh, but we're not going to be learning Alisa about Hawaii Alisa. today. <laughs> we're going to be learning about New Mexico. Uh, you got it. Alright, take the picture. Okay. Seriously, I'm just going to keep the costume on just for a second. You guys like the uh, skull here? It's pretty cool. Oh, and I need to turn on the uh, viewfinder as well. Uh, how is everybody today? This is our second class of the week. Uh, we learned about the great state this week. And uh, today we're going to be learning about New Mexico. Hey, Google. Volume 3. Hey Google, play KMFA. Streaming KMFA from iHeartRadio. So, uh, we went over a little bit yesterday, but we're just going to start fresh today. Hey Google, Volume 4. Alright. So,
Mexico. So New Mexico. It's the 47th state. Mentos. It's the 47th state to enter the union. Um, that was right before Arizona. Uh, New Mexico became a state in 1912. It was a territory for over a hundred years. Um, it became a state right before the uh, Arizona became a state, and Arizona was originally um, going to be called going to be New Mexico Territory, uh, but then Arizona was like, "Nah, -uh, f that. We want our own state." And uh, yeah, so Arizona was originally supposed to be part of Mexico, um, but. Uh, as far as New Mexico goes, uh, people have lived in that area, especially um, uh, in the northern and the whole state of New Mexico. That's probably what it should be known for, as well as Mentos. Uh, no, um, no, New Mexico should be known for American Spirit cigarettes because American Spirit cigarettes are manufactured in the Santa Fe. I know those are like hipster cigarettes and they're usually more expensive than other cigarettes, but the thing is, in New Mexico. Uh, they supply uh, so many that those are like uh, actually the cheapest cigarettes, American Spirits, and everybody smokes them there as well. Uh, some more industries in New Mexico, uh, military, uh, oil production, they're actually third in oil production, gas production is also big there, tourism is big, uh, uranium, they, it's one of the rare Set. uranium farms in the United States, or uranium mines I should say. Um, yeah, is located in New Mexico, and currently they're number one in perlite. Perlite is a type of glass that's used uh, for garden. A farm in New Mexico, and uh, it was the first farm I worked at in Rivera, New Mexico. I ended up working at other farms as well. Um, but uh, I know a lot about New Mexico because I lived there for a brief time before I moved to Hawaii. Uh, but the farm that I was at, we grew all kinds of tomatoes, red tomatoes, blue tomatoes, purple tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes, tomatoes for pasta, tomatoes for salad, baby tomatoes, uh, stewed tomatoes, tomatoes you could eat like an apple. Uh, the best tomatoes ever. Oh, and of course fried green tomatoes as well. And we would sell them the tomatoes as well as other uh, produce at three different farmers markets. The farmers market in Santa Fe was the main farmers market that we went to. Uh, that was on every uh, Saturday. Uh, the farmers market in Las Vegas, New Mexico, that was on every Friday. And then they had a little farmers market in the town that we were in, uh, Rivera, New Mexico, every Sunday. So I got to learn a lot about New Mexico during the time I was there. I ended up becoming manager of that farm in Rivera, New Mexico. And I really uh, did enjoy, I, did, I learned a lot about it and stayed there for a while. Um, but yeah, um, more about uh, just the facts about New Mexico. Uh, like I said, the capital of New Mexico, I don't think I mentioned it's Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, like I did mention that people have been living there for a long time. Some of the oldest uh, relics on North America. Hey, Cody. Said, Pee Wee Herman. Uh, yeah, Pee Wee Herman. Can we class, can everybody say Adobe? Adobe. Come on, class, everybody. Adobe. <laughs> That's from uh, Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. You guys have seen that movie? Adobe. Cody seen it. Far SJ, the mermaid, said, LOL, Adobe. Cody underscore Jill. Uh, LOL. Heidi is uh, making some noises behind the uh, chalkboard here. I, th I think Sholi actually crawled back there. Sholi, don't go back there. Don't go on the computer either, Sholi. Here, I'm going to turn a little, a little fan on for you, Sholi. No, don't go on there, Sholi. Sholi, come on. Here, Sholi, you can sit on the chair. You can sit on the chair right here. It's okay, you sit there. You got the fan over there, too. All right, so, uh, continuing on. Where was I? Uh, well, I was talking about New Mexico, obviously. Uh, I made this nice graphic of New Mexico. Uh, but also, uh, we're talking about Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico is probably my favorite town uh, or city on the Midwest. It's one of the smallest state capitals in the United States. Uh, it's the tallest state capital. It's, um, I believe it's uh, about 12,000 feet high. Um, it's 83,000 population. Uh, but the metro population is a little bit bigger if you include Taos, New Mexico, which is just north of Santa Fe. 
Taos is actually uh, the oldest. Um, there, there, there's a little. So many nuclear United States. Yes, that's in southern New Mexico, in Los Alamos. They have the National Laboratory there. And actually, New Mexico leads the nation in PhDs per capita because of that reason. And it's kind of ironic because uh, they actually ranked uh, second to last in education. And they're second to last in poverty. There's obviously a correlation there. Uh, the only state that ranks worse than them is Mississippi. Uh, so New Mexico is the poorest state out of the Deep South. Uh, sometimes Alabama and Louisiana are close in there, but in general, there's no other state out west uh, that has uh, as little money uh, in uh, this as, as New Mexico does. It's, and that has such a high poverty rate. Uh, for instance, their neighbors next door, Arizona. Much higher population than for seven million. Uh, so they have more than three times as many people. But Arizona's uh, actually smaller than New Mexico. It has the uh, the uh, what is it? The Sonora Desert, not the Sonora Desert. The uh, uh, we learned about earlier this week. Uh, but in New Mexico, they have the Chihuahua Desert, which goes into New uh, Arizona just a tad little bit there. Um, like I said, I spent some time in uh, New Mexico. I lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I worked on a farm in Rivera, New Mexico. And I would spend a lot of time in Taos, New Mexico. It's an arts community. Uh, Taos uh, has the oldest occupied building in the United States. Uh, people have been living in that building. To see the white sand dunes. Yeah, the white sand dunes. If you guys have seen the movie The Doors, uh, there's a uh, great uh, scene with the white sand dunes. People come from all around. Uh, it's actually white uh, perlodite, um, and it's the largest of its kind uh, in the entire world. Um, well, it's a, it's a type of glass, um, but uh, yeah, New Mexico is known for its outside beauty. Um, Capitula Volcano, uh, Carlsbad Caverns. Bot said. Put Mr. G with a donation through Stream Elements, HTTPS. Wheeler Peak. I'll go ahead and uh, I see a uh, picture of the uh, Wheeler Peak is the uh, highest point in the state of New Mexico. It's over 12,000 feet high. Drive past the White Sands. It's pretty beautiful. Yeah, the White Sands is the White Sands National Monument. Uh, there's actually over 20 different, uh, no, no, Arizona has over 20 different uh, national monuments. I don't know how many there are uh, in New Mexico, but I do know uh, that New Mexico is number two in sunshine and Arizona is number one. The two states are compared to a lot of, uh, to uh, compare. Uh, country so man. so uh, we've talked so, to the country man. Hey, G, what's up, brother? Uh, we're just starting off the uh, New Mexico class today. Uh, but yeah, another uh, great site uh, outdoors, you know, like I said, New Mexico is known for the outdoors. Its nicknames are uh, the Colorful State. Uh, yeah, the Colorful National Forest, we'll get to that too. Uh, actually, uh, you know, one-fourth of the entire state of New Mexico is forest, actually. A lot of people think it's all desert, but no, one-quarter of it is uh, forest. But as far as the uh, Capitulin Actually, Volcano, yeah. you can so, actually go to this extinct volcano so uh, and go to the... Yeah, okay. Uh, you can go Wait, I'm not sure if you can see Arizona, because I think it's on the eastern side. Uh, hey Google, pause. Hey Google, volume 10. Hey Google, tell us about a uh, Capit Capulin volcano. Here's a summary from the website nps.gov. The volcano stands. Hey Google. Oh, Jay, the mermaid. Volume ten. Said. Hi there, countryman. Nightbot. Hey Google, said. tell us about Capitulin volcano. On the website nps.gov, they say part of the 8,000 square mile Raton Clayton volcanic field. Capulin Volcano showcases the volcanic geology of northeastern New Mexico. The views are spectacular day or night, with views of four different states from the volcanic rim and one of the darkest night skies in the country. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, Arizona and New Mexico are known for their great skies, the darkest skies. There's lots of observatories in both New Mexico and Arizona. Uh, but yeah, the Capitulum volcano, you can see so far out in the distance because it's a cinder cone volcano surrounded by grasslands. You can see Kansas. Uh, you can see like five different states, Kansas, Texas, uh, New Mexico. Uh, but yeah, New, New Mexico is known for their outside uh, beauty. The uh, has been written on their driver's uh, plates, their license plates, for uh, almost uh, you know 75 years. It didn't become the official state motto until... Um, uh, just about like till like, 1960, but it's known as the land of enchantment. It also is known as the colorful state. Uh, it's also known as uh, the uh, most dangerous state in America, believe it or not. I uh, will cover that. Um, Albuquerque, it's a really dangerous place. That's where Breaking Bad is set. Uh, they have lots of drug crime, lots of property crime, uh, and you know, uh, hardcore drugs, those lead to crime. Uh, you know, the two go hand in hand. So. Uh, there's lots of car thefts. I think if you live in Albuquerque, you have a 1 in 20 chance of being the victim of a property crime. Uh, there's lots of violent crime there as well, especially for the population of uh, being so small, uh, just 2 million people. And you can't say um, that it's all the cr crime. Hey, I, right when you said that, you can't say that necessarily because uh, New Mexico is a very democratic state. Arizona is typically Republican. Um, Arizona actually has 250,000 undocumented immigrants, and New Mexico actually only has 85,000 undocumented in immigrants. So Arizona has three times the amount of illegal aliens, as you put it. Um, and uh, that doesn't, uh, you know, if, you, if, that, if that statement was true, if the amount of crime was due to illegal Im immigrants, then um, you would think that that number would be higher. There would be more undocumented immigrants in New Mexico than there is in Arizona, but that's not the case. There's more than three times... <laughs> oh, space aliens. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, Roswell. Roswell is a very popular town in New Mexico. Yeah, we'll change the subject there. <laughs> uh, in 1947, something happened in Roswell. Um, it was documented by the U.S. military, and it was published in their newspaper. Back in 1947, uh, the population was, wasn't, uh, I mean, the uh, communication wasn't uh, as it is today. And so it seems like the military didn't have time to cover it up. Now, actually, uh, the military admits um, to uh, finding alien spacecraft. Uh, this information is going to be released uh, sometime in the next 30 to 60 days. There's lots of YouTube videos about it. Um, but the, well, there was going to be lots of more information released about Roswell uh, within the next couple months. But it is a fact that something was found. Um, I don't know if they're <coughs> <coughs> necessarily trying to reverse engineering. Why did I all of a sudden start coughing? Fucking government. But you have Roswell, New Mexico. And you have numerous... Um, sightings of UFOs throughout that area of New Mexico and Arizona. Uh, like I said, uh, Los Alamos, the National Laboratory, is located there. Uh, the first atomic bomb ever exploded on Earth uh, happened on July 16, 1945, you know, shortly before they uh, you know, dropped one on uh, Hiroshima and then you know, Nagasaki, of course. But um, they tested it first in New Mexico, at a place called Ronta del Muerta. Now, Ronta del Muerta, I'm not really sure what Ronta means, but del Muerta means of death. So it's a, uh, a fitting place to drop uh, the world's first atomic bomb. A place called of death. Right? West, well, south, southern New Mexico, while we're talking about towns, um, the second largest city in New Mexico is Las Cruces, New Mexico. Um, that's where you'll find New Mexico State University, which is actually an older school than New Mexico University, but not as highly prestigious. But both schools are actually very low, lowly ranked state schools. They're two of the lowest ranked state schools in the United States. And that goes with everything, sports, academics. They're, they're in the same league as Hawaii. Hawaii plays New Mexico in football and 
all that. So uh, there are two schools that are not very, very uh, highly regarded in academics. Um, you know, if you're uh, comparing Arizona State and um, the University of Arizona compared to New Mexico University and New Mexico State, it's, it's not even close. Uh, both schools, uh, New Mexico State came about in 1888. Um, the University of New Mexico, the Lobos, which are the much more popular school, uh, they came about a year later in 1889. Both schools have about 25,000 students. Uh, I think uh, New Mexico, you know, uh, the University of New Mexico has about 27,000. So that's nothing compared to the 50,000 of Arizona University or the University of Arizona and 77,000 of Arizona State University, which we learned earlier this week. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Arizona you know, has a much higher population, much higher GDP. Uh, much better with education, but we're not just shitting on, uh, you know, New Mexico compared to Arizona. New Mexico has a much more uh, natural beauty. Um, I've talked about Taos, New Mexico, and Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, they're on the foothills of the Santa de Cristo Mountains. Uh, very beautiful skiing in that area, and uh, you know, it's a very high tourist area. Santa Fe, uh, like I said, it's one of my favorite places in the world. Um, it's really great. Um, Scenic, uh, old-fashioned, Las Vegas, New Mexico, uh, they made it like an old-fashioned place. Hmm. I still got this damn volcano on the board. But, but yeah, New Mexico definitely has to be one of my favorite places. This is a picture of Las Vegas, New Mexico. Um, that's where um, Billy the Kid and I. Uh, Doc Holiday. That used to be an old western town. You know, a lot of gunfights happened there. Like I said, with Doc Holiday, Billy the Kid. Uh, Geronimo, famous Native American, was also from New Mexico. And Pancho Villa was from New Mexico as well. There's this huge statue of Pancho Villa in New Mexico. Which is really odd. Because if you learn about Pancho Villa, he actually raided New Mexico towns. I believe it was Independence, New Mexico. Some of the small towns on the border there in like the late 1800s. And he killed women and children. He was a brutal uh, barbarian, you know. And uh, he eluded the U.S. Marshals. You know, there's a famous song called Poncho and Lefty. Um, you guys probably heard it. I'm sure, I'm sure Countryman has heard that song. But... Pancho and Lefty was all about Pancho Villa. And his sidekick who ended up turning him in <coughs> to the authorities. Alright. We talked about military. Uh, one thing is the Dulce base. You know what we need to talk about? So there's military bases all around Santa Fe. But there's supposed to be a secret military base on the uh, New Mexico Colorado border. But yeah, we're talking about Roswell. Here on the board, you see the famous Dunkin' Donuts, um, Baskin Robbins in Roswell. A lot of people go there. It's a really campy place. They're really trying to, uh, you know, benefit on the uh, whole alien craze. Uh, it does have a population of about 50,000 people, which is a lot. And mostly all the whole uh, economy is based on tourism as well. People come to Roswell, they think they're going to see some aliens or something like that. But like I said, the first people to live in the uh, area, that, which is known as New Mexico, uh, were the Clovis people. And that was the first uh, oldest uh, remnants that we have of any civilization in North America, is the Clovis people. Uh, if you watch Joe Rogan, there's been a few episodes about the Clovis people and the Cliff people. Here on the board is the Anasani Cliff people. Those were originally thought to be the oldest uh, North American ancestors uh, until the Clovis people were discovered, um, you know, a few uh, decades later. So, the area has been inhabited for a long time. Like I said, it has a real special feel to it, New Mexico does. Especially the part that I live the most in, uh, Santa Fe in New Mexico. I mean, Santa Fe and Taos up in the mountains. It has a really... Um, original feel. Yesterday when I was talking about, I mentioned how when I lived there I had a bus pass because they had a, a really awesome bus system in Santa Fe. 
where they would um, have these old buses from like the 60s and 70s and they'd be equipped with AM FM radios so they would be playing uh, whatever bus driver you got maybe he's playing top 40 or maybe they're playing he's playing uh, the classic rock station was the most common uh, but for such a small area their Santa Fe is known for their radio they have a, one of the best classical music stations in the country which I listen to here in Hawaii as well with my smart speaker uh, they're known for their uh, Santa Fe Opera House uh, and their museums are top-notch some of the best art museums uh, they are in the world especially the best uh, South Bus museums with a lot of Native American art uh, a lot of Hopi architecture, a lot of Navajo, I mean, art and sculpture and artwork, a lot of Navajo Nation, and uh, a lot of Anazani people as well. So um, it's a really great place. Um, also, Santa Fe is known for their turquoise jewelry. You know, I'm sure you guys have seen this jewelry. It's popular worldwide. Um, it originates for Santa Fe, that's where it comes from, it's Santa Fe jewelry. And uh, it's made by the real authentic turquoise jewelry. It comes from this little area where Native Americans, mainly Hopi and Navajo people, they sell their jewelry right here by the square in downtown Santa Fe. Also yesterday I mentioned how Yeah, I was wondering, I thought maybe you have been there. It's one a really big tourist spot. And uh, yesterday I was mentioning how uh, me and my friend Jazz, uh, when we got to Santa Fe, uh, he had an accordion. And he would, uh, we all went on the famous square right there. And uh, he played his accordion while I stood with a 20, or with a few bills, like a 20 and 10 and a 5. And he would play the only song that he knew how to play, the 12 Monkeys theme. And then I would act like I'm all into it, like, yeah, look at this guy, he's good, he's good, look at him, you know? And I put the money in the thing and then start a uh, dono, a, a, a in real life dono train for my, my friend, the wealthy street musician, who was actually from Homer, Alaska, but would spend his uh, summers in Hawaii. He was one of the first people to tell me all about Hawaii. But uh, me and Jazz were in Santa Fe, we were actually there to join the Occupy movement. Because this was right around the time of the uh, the Occupy uh, Wall Street movement that happened in New York City, and then they had Occupy Dallas and Occupy Florida, and every major metropolitan metropolitan area, including <laughs> including Santa Fe, had that which was the closest Occupy camp, and so we went and tried to join the Occupy camp, uh, which I didn't really get along with because it was really. Uh, you know, a lot of like spoiled rich kids. I, I, I'm a totally different person now, much more conservative, much more right leaning. Uh, so I didn't really know. I just, you know, went along for the ride at that time. Uh, Taos, New Mexico is one of my favorite places. Uh, when I go there, I stay at the Abominable Snow Mansion. It's like back when I stayed there, it was $15, $20 a night for your own private room. Uh, it's something like a hostel, and it's located in Arroyo del Seco. And when I visited the first time, I was just a, a kid like 20 something years old and back then when I was 21 I was really like 16 in my head right but um, I remember talking to Native American people there that saying it's the oldest you know occupied uh, area in the United States and they're actually right people have been living in that area uh, for hundreds of years uh, the Spanish first uh, made it the capital of Mexico um, back in the early uh, 1600s but uh, before that it was even occupied by Native Americans as well so people have always lived in the, those mountains of Santa Fe. It's always been a real special place. And, uh, I, and I can see why. And I can explain it the best I can. Uh, but, you know. Uh, one other thing is uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico. They also have these lithium hot springs uh, that have been there for a long time. And I would go there a lot. Um, yesterday I mentioned how I went there once and I went uh, naked. Uh, well, I didn't bring a swimming, bathing suit, and so everybody convinced me just to go without one. I'm sorry, I did. And that was a fun time. But we went back there a lot. We went there once when it was snowing. Probably the coldest I ever been. I thought my heart was going to stop. The hot springs are boiling hot. Some are so hot you can't even step in. But it was snowing all around. And the group that I was with, 
they jump in the snow and make snow angels, and then jump in the steaming water, and then jump out and jump in the snow, and jump in the water. Me, my body wasn't like that, you know? My body um, couldn't take those, those extremes of hot and cold. And uh, I thought I almost was going to die just coming from the water to the car. And uh, that's when um, you know Hawaii started to see uh, sing a lot better when I started to experience the cold weather in New Mexico. Granted, the northern Mexico is much cooler than the southern part. Um, some more uh, small towns about New Mexico. Redosa is a uh, resort town with a gambling casino. Um, Truth or Consequences has a uh, famous... It used to be called Hot Spring, actually. Truth or Consequences it used to be Hot Spring. And then the 1950s game show of the same name, Truth or Consequences, dared them to change their name of their town. And so they did. Some more things about New Mexico. Who is? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the people from there, they just call it T or C. And uh, they don't even call it hot spring, it's called truth or consequences. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now I remember him. But yeah, um, Albuquerque is the biggest city. Uh, it's a population of about a million in the metro area, which includes four counties. Some of the nicknames of Albuquerque is the, the Q, or the Dirty Q. Part of the city is known as the War Zone. Uh, so like I said, it's a very high crime area. It seems like a lot of New Mexico, like the northern part, Santa Fe's house, is really good. Um, then you have the southern part, you know, where you have Los Alamos Research Center and Las Cruces, New Mexico. Uh, it doesn't seem that bad. Uh, but then you have Albuquerque, and they just seem to be overtaken uh, with drugs and bad stuff, you know? So, so we talked about all the cities. Um, we talked about some of the, um, some of the natural beauty. Um, Carlsbad Cavern, Caverns is like the, one of the largest underground caverns in the United States. That's where you'll find stalactites and stalagmites hanging from the ceiling. Um, there's a famous ice cave called the Bandera Ice Cave. That's uh, somehow connected to that. Yeah. Um, Mrs. J earlier mentioned the White Sands uh, National uh, Monument, uh, and that's actually white gypsum. Uh, it's a white gypsum crystal doom, and it's the largest of its kind on Earth. As you can see, a picture on the board there. What? We are going to get into a lot of foods. One thing New Mexico is known for is our Hatch Chili Peppers. Hatch New Mexico is in Southeast New Mexico. They have green and red chili peppers throughout New Mexico, and those are really important. And this is a New Mexico flag. Well, that part right here, it's made out of pepper shell. But um, the actual flag has quite a uh, interesting story. So I'll show you. I'll show you on the board here. So all right. So this is just a uh, artist's work uh, from Fine Art America. But you see this symbol all across New Mexico. Now there's four rays on each side for a total of 16 rays. And each ray uh, symbolizes something significant. Uh, so the four rays up, they signify the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Uh, the four way, rays down signify the directions, north, east, south, and west. The four way rays to the right signify infancy, infancy youth, adulthood and old age and the four rays to the left uh, signify dawn daylight dust and dark and uh, class uh, I hate to inform you but uh, this will be on the test as well 
Uh, so you will need to remember where each of the 16 rays are located and what each of them uh, signify. Okay? Okay. Well, like I said, Mrs. J, uh, we will be testing about that. territory uh, for almost 100 years until 1912 um, when it became a state right before Arizona. Uh, we talked about some of the uh, like um, the um, Kapolin Volcano and uh, the White Sands National Monument, the Bandera Ice Cave, Carlsbad Cavern. Uh, one thing we didn't mention, we mentioned the Clovis people, the Ansani people, and we mentioned how Spaniards attacked They had like back now. International. Damn. I 
Are you? We're live. Okay. Broadcasting gods. Let's see if we can continue the freaking lecture. So on the board here I have Spanish conquistadors. Fame. Alright. That came from New Mexico in the 1600s. They claimed a bunch of land and say some of them still own the same land. They still dress the same way and they still speak a style of Spanish that comes from Spain, northern Spain. That is never that's not it's not in the Basque region. It's not it doesn't come from northern Spain, it just comes from Spain. I don't want you to get it confused. Uh, but it's still spoken in northern New Mexico and nowhere else in the world is that kind of old school Spanish still spoken. And I can tell you with my first and experience that they still dress the same and they still legit carry swords. They own huge parcels and farmland too. Because those guys were like our competition uh, when I worked on the farm in Rivera, New Mexico. We would see these conquistadors, no joke, dressed like the a picture here. And they had the most, uh, the biggest tomatoes and the biggest watermelons and all, they had like the best produce of everyone else. And they would go around and they would pick up like everybody else's vegetables. They're like, Ah, this is not the tomato. And they would speak it in their old English way. Blah, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they would just like walk around like the cockiest, uh, cockiest birds in the hen house, you know? And um, it was a sight to see. And my boss was like, what the hell? Why are they dressed up like, you know? And you'd be like, yeah, they're, they're actually descendants from, you know, conquistadors. They still speak that ancient style of Spanish. And uh, they own lots of land. No joke. So, yeah, New Mexico has a lot of... Uh, if I had to live anywhere on the mainland, it probably would be New Mexico. There's a lot of adventure there. There's a lot of spicy food, too. I mentioned the Hot Air Balloon Festival. I don't know if we effed out at that point. Uh, but the largest hot air balloon festival in the world happens in Albuquerque every fall. Uh, where 700 balloons um, all come at once. It's supposed to be a great sight to see out there in Albuquerque. Um, like I said, uh, New Mexico is a really old uh, place. Um, the closest people, the oldest people in the world. It's got a lot of history. Not a lot of people are moving to New Mexico. Uh, they do have, you know, immigration. Uh, but like I said, there's only 85,000 undocumented immigrants in New Mexico where its neighbor, Arizona, has closer to 300,000 immigrants, more than almost three times as many as New Mexico. So, uh, also, uh, New Mexico is not good on education. They're second worst in education. And it's not a safe state either. It's supposed to be the 47th most safe state. Uh, there's lots of violent crime and, and lots of property crime in, uh, in Albuquerque. One of the highest property crime rates in the United States uh, judging per capita, where if you're living in the uh, in Albuquerque, you have something like a one in twenty chance of being the victim of a violent or uh, property crime. Uh, nicknames of Albuquerque is the Q, uh, also known as the Dirty Q, and it's where um, Breaking Bad takes place. Uh, part of the uh, section of the city, the southeast part of Albuquerque, is known as the War Zone uh, because of all the crime out there. Now, um, as far as some basics um, about the uh, state of Albuquerque, the state of uh, New Mexico, is uh, they have a lot of wildlife that you won't see anywhere else. Uh, New Mexico is one of the few places that you'll find wolves in the United States. Uh, that's why their um, you know New Mexico University is known as the Lobos. Uh, Lobo is the Mexican word for. Lobos is the Mexican word for. Mentos. Lobos is the Mexican word for. And we're going to be here all day if we have to, class. Lobos. Here. Let's do this real quick. Lobos is the Mexican word for. Wolves. It's wolves. Okay. So, if you're watching this not live on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not from New Mexico, I've done every other state. 
So go ahead and find your steak. One thing I want to talk about in Mexico is a really big holiday. It's Dios de los Muertos. Dios de los Muertos. Cheetos are big in New Mexico. Dios de los Muertos is a Day of the Dead. It's a Mexican holiday, but it's really big in New Mexico. It's really important. And uh, it happens uh, every year around Halloween. And in Santa Fe, New Mexico, if you want to see an awesome Day of the Dead festival, go to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, I went to an awesome one. Uh, everybody paints their face like skulls, and it's a really awesome, awesome thing that you really got to see to believe. All right, uh, so Native Americans. Uh, New Mexico has a very strong Native American population. Uh, the Navajo Nation is right there in the Four Corners area. Uh, the Four Corners area, um, that's where you'll find the Monument Valley. Uh, Monument Valley, it's a, a famous national monument. Um, New Mexico, um, it didn't have a, a, it was hard to get settlers out there, uh, even though the United States owned it in the 1800s because it's so hot. Uh, that's one reason why they built the adobe buildings. The adobe are made of clay and uh, mud, and they're, they're put together with mud and clay, and they're really good for the summertime because they, they, they let a cool breeze go through the walls. And they're really good in the winter time because they keep all the warm air in. Uh, if I'm building a house here in Hawaii, I'm going to consider uh, to try to get some adobe. I think I've actually seen an adobe house in Hawaii. And uh, it's a really great idea because here in Hawaii, they have something similar with the uh, chandelier windows. Uh, the trade winds is a natural breeze. And they try to have that with the windows so the natural breeze just comes in and cools things off a little bit. Uh, similar to... Uh, Santa Fe, where I lived in northern New Mexico, we had the uh, foothills of the Santa de Cristo Mountains. Um, it was really awesome to uh, have a nice uh, mountain breeze coming in. Uh, so what else? Um, we mentioned about the sunshine. Uh, there is a lot of desert, the Chihuahuan Desert. Uh, uh, holds like the, uh, the whole bottom part of the state, northern New Mexico. Uh, we talked about the, the secret military base. I think it's called the Dulce Base. Uh, you've seen it in like um, Men in Black, they go to that base. I think Terminator Salvations, that movie, they go to that base as well. Uh, it's supposed to be a secret underground base uh, located uh, on the uh, New Mexico-Colorado border. Now, uh, I'm going to show you on the board here. Like I said, it was really hard to get settlers to move to New Mexico. Um, it wasn't until air conditioning that the population really started to uh, increase in air. We're going to learn about Nevada next week on Monday. But um, uh, the very first settlers to settle New Mexico, they came on the Santa Fe Trail. Uh, now, the Santa Fe Trail was a uh, Old West Trail uh, that went from Missouri to Santa Fe. Uh, but during the uh, Mexican-American War, where you know, the United States won part of the area, which is now New Mexico and Arizona, it was a very important route uh, to get supplies to the front lines uh, from the East Coast uh, rivers uh, in Missouri, like the Mississippi River and the Missouri River. Uh, back then, uh, before um, railroad, uh, the main way of travel and to move <clears throat> goods and services uh, was through the waterways. And that's why you had so many uh, large American cities uh, built up right along the Mississippi River and the Missouri River, because those were the two uh, highways of the time. Um, the Santa Fe Trail it really uh, increased uh, settlers and population across the trail because uh, individuals, uh, you know, like I said, they needed supplies for the war. Uh, once the uh, advent of the locomotive and the steam engine, um, there was unnecessary, and the Santa Fe Rail Ray, Railroad uh, took over and replaced the trail really quickly. And uh, if you go to Santa Fe now, you see a lot of trains and a lot of railways, and the trains uh, look like they did uh, back in the day when this uh, photograph was made. Uh, so uh, that was a really interesting site. You know, you see the Santa Fe, there's all these different trains, and it's like, where are these trains going? Uh, but the Santa Fe Railway, uh, it was a really uh, popular um, route, and it really also increased um, <clears throat> uh, population. And it went, uh, anybody traveling out west to California during the gold rush, uh, some of them maybe uh, wanted to stop in New Mexico. 
Uh, me, myself, being from Texas, when I was traveling out west, I stopped in uh, Santa Fe in the railway, and part of me wanted to stay, uh, just like a lot of people back then did. Uh, but the majority of them probably went out west to, you know, uh, San Francisco and other places, and the gold rush in Alaska, and, uh, you know, some of them found their fortune, some of them didn't. Uh, but yeah, I could see uh, the uh, romanticism of Santa Fe and, and New Mexico. They say uh, Santa Fe is the best place for a writer. Uh, many, many writers live in Santa Fe. Um, I um, Here's the uh, famous uh, Monument Valley uh, out in, uh, near the Four Corners area. Uh, if you guys remember, um, I used to talk about Forrest Finn. He had a treasure hunt. Uh, he lived in Santa Fe and owned an uh, art gallery in Santa Fe. And uh, uh, Forrest Finn, uh, he passed away recently. Somebody found his treasure. Uh, but Santa Fe is really great for art galleries and uh, memorabilia and ancient uh, Indian uh, uh, architecture. Uh, like I said, some of the, the oldest uh, North American architecture is located in Clovis, New Mexico. What the heck, dude? That is so fucked up, man. Hold on a second. Yes, hello? What the hell do you want? Alright, sorry about that. about some of the demographics in New Mexico. It's actually the most diverse, second most diverse state. It's a minority majority state, uh, which means uh, minorities are the majority. But it's a very diverse state uh, with Native American influences, Mexican American influences, and uh, European American influences. Similar to Hawaii. Hawaii is actually the most diverse state, and New Mexico is the second most diverse state. Hawaii is also a minority majority state uh, because the majority population here is Asian. All right, we talked about uh, two schools, New Mexico State University and uh, Santa Fe, I mean, uh, New Mexico State and uh, University of New Mexico. We talked about the Santa Fe Trail. Um, it's a trail that started before the railroad. Uh, it started in Franklin, Missouri, and it ended in Santa Fe. Uh, the railroad was eliminated by the, I mean, excuse me, the trail was eliminated by the advent of the steam engine and uh, hence the Santa Fe Railroad, uh, which took over and was very popular and had rail routes that went all the way to San Francisco and California. All right, more um, about the history. Um, the Confederate Army actually... Uh, held the majority of northern New Mexico. You know, that didn't work out well for them. They ended up, you know, losing to the Union. Uh, but they really wanted to take control of New Mexico and make it as somewhat of a slave state, believe it or not. Uh, what else? Um, less than two-thirds of um, the state of uh, New Mexico speaks English. Uh, it's the only state other than Hawaii to have two languages their official language. In Hawaii, uh, the two official languages are English and Hawaiian, and in uh, New Mexico, the two official language languages are English and Spanish. Uh, believe it or not, a lot of people on the uh, mainland United States, they aren't aware that New Mexico is actually a state of its own. Uh, the name New Mexico actually predates the country Mexico. Uh, it was called New Mexico before Mexico was even a country back when it was still part of Spain. Three.
310, where's that? 310, 428. 9-1. Hmm. All right. So, New Mexico is my favorite state. Um, it has a lot of natural beauty. And uh, it's got a lot of variety, a lot of adventure, a lot of different people there. Uh, we are going to talk about the foods. Uh, the green chili and the red chili dominate the food. Um, and uh, then, yeah, we're going to uh, wrap things up. I mentioned the uh, two major universities. Uh, this is the University of New Mexico, the Lobos. Uh, like I said, they're the only place in the New Mexico that's where you'll find wolves still. And uh, the New Mexico State Aggies. Uh, we have Aggies in Texas, and Aggies, uh, they're the, the, the Texas A&M Aggies, um, short for agricultural, uh, you know, because it's a top agricultural school. Uh, so I guess uh, New Mexico State as well is a top agricultural school. Um, I didn't mention the uh, flower, the state flower. I believe uh, it's not the yucca. It's the, oh no, it is. It's the yucca flower. It's the state flower. Those grow everywhere in Texas too. Is the yucca flower? You'll see that on the board. Um, like I said, the wolves are, are still there, but the uh, state bird is the road runner. Uh, road runner is also UTSA road runners. I could tell you a crazy story about me on the campus of UTSA, but I'll save that for another day. Uh, the road runner is the state bird, and what else? Uh, we mentioned Doc Holiday. 702-902 Hello? What are you doing? Yeah, your phone number, what is it? 702-902? Huh? Uh, no, I didn't leave my phone number anywhere. That was somebody else. Don't call this number again. Got it? State tree of the Mexico's opinion pride opinion opinion pine seven oh two nine zero two eight nine four seven three one zero four two eight nine one two five I know I'm trying to turn it off, I don't know where, where the ring is at really. Oh, I think I did have it on regular on mute a second ago. Alright, so the pinion pine is a state tree. Yeah, they seem to last through the winter. They um they're very um strong. Uh, here on the board you see some of the uh, famous monuments. I talked about the uh, Clovis people and the Anazani people. Uh, some of the uh, famous uh, architecture there is the Abuo Pueblo ruins, uh, the Coma Pueblo, uh, Old Town Albuquerque, uh, White Sands National Monument, we mentioned that. Uh, the New Mexico State Capitol, that's in Santa Fe and it's made of adobe as well. That's uh, a, a very popular tourist site. Uh, right across from the Santa Fe Library, uh, which, other than the library located in downtown Honolulu, is the oldest operating library in the United States. And that library, as well as the Hawaii Honolulu State Library, is the two are the two libraries that I use the most to write my first book, Gonzo Education. So I actually wrote this book uh, right across the street from the uh, Santa Fe State Capitol, and also right across the street from the Hawaii State Capitol as well. Fun fact. All right, some more things. And I'll show you some more of that, that blue turquoise jewelry just because it's so pretty. And uh, what else? 
Uh, well, we're going to get into food here now. I think we're about covered with the lecture here. Um, here's a, a wonderful shot of uh, the uh, lovely beauty, the outdoor beauty. Uh, like I said, it's known as the colorful state. Um, the state animal, the official state animal is actually the black bear. Uh, the one time in my life where I saw a bear was in Rivera, New Mexico. It wasn't a black bear, it was a cinnamon bear, uh, and I saw him in a tree. I was at, uh, it was when I was uh, working on a farm, I was the manager of a farm, and uh, there was another farm down the street uh, and down the road, because two-thirds of the roads in New Mexico are unpaved, and, and that was a big surprise. I drove there, I got there in a uh, Mazda Protégé, and I, I had to learn to off-road quickly. Uh, but when I saw the bear, uh, we were uh, moving firewood, and uh, me and a bunch of guys were moving cut firewood and placing them in the back of a truck. And uh, one of the guys was like, look, there's a bear. And then he's like, where? And he's like, way up in that tree. Had, had, a, had a previous encounter with two bears, that one and its partner. The two bears were eating corn stalks, and the farmer said, uh, I heard him with his own mouth, uh, he, the bears were ripping up the corn stalks and eating corn stalks, and he walked out there with a shotgun just trying to scare them away. And he walked out there with a shotgun, and one of the bears looked at him and just started charging at him, and then he just, <laughs> and he uh, you know, a couple shots with the shotgun. Uh, you know, the bear die. the one bear dies and the other one takes off running and goes running up a tree and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, um, the other bear is like stuck in the tree and, uh, apparently it, it hadn't come down either. It just shows how uh, brutal nature is. Uh, you know, the world in itself is hard enough as it is. Uh, there's so many terrible things in the world, disease, hunger, uh, starvation, hurricanes. Uh, during this class period, how many kids died of uh, starvation or diarrhea across the world? What, you didn't know that? Yeah, kids, thousands die every day. Uh, that's why it's like so uh, small like uh, to see like petty people, uh, you know, trying to... Uh, uh, trying to distract me and stuff, uh, it just shows how low they, their lives are. Um, I'm actually doing something constructive here. If you're watching this right now, uh, give it a thumbs up. Um, you know, if you just want to say something about New Mexico, put it in the comments. But uh, I don't have anything to do with that gross, garbage, pale kid crowd. I have nothing to do with them. I didn't ask to be part of any directory. Uh, they don't own YouTube. They don't own Twitch. And it's weird that it's been three years and these creeps incels are still harassing me on the daily and it's it's sad it shows like like yo go get a girlfriend go move out of your parents basement do, do something with your life bro like what are you doing man you know it's like i'm not part of anything i'm doing something constructive on youtube there's legit a million people on youtube with a million subscribers and that king of your incel guy he, he has what, six, like, he doesn't, he, like, they're nothing, dude, move on, the, the, this is, right now, it's, it's, it used to be really bad, but now it's just the worst of the worst, like, it used to be just, like, simple incels, now it's just, like, like, the fucking, like, you know, like, Dungeons and Dragon beard nerds fucking losers, right, alright, <clears throat> continuing on. Uh, yeah, I guess that's everything about the, uh, the state of New Mexico. It's a, it seems like a really nice uh, area. I've lived there a lot. Uh, there is a lot of alcohol problem there. It's number one in alcohol-related deaths per capita, and that goes with uh, alcohol overdoses and as well as DWIs. And during the time that I lived in Santa Fe, one thing that I, I definitely noticed were the little bottles of alcohol that were everywhere. <clears throat> one thing about Santa Fe is I made a lot of videos there. I made a lot of videos in Santa Fe, and uh, I published them to a lot to YouTube. This was on my original YouTube channel that had over a million views, and uh, I had a lot of popular videos on there. One video had like, uh, you know, a lot of views. One, one video was actually one of the most watched videos on YouTube. Uh, but right before you know these toxic you know, pieces of shit came to Hawaii, uh, that that channel was uh, falsely striked twelve times in one night. <clears throat> 
I'm still working on finding a you know a legal representation uh, to get my original channel back. But I actually did have hundreds of videos on there. What are you doing, dude? You're so pathetic, man. You look so bad. Nobody can hear you but me, dude. There's no speaker phone here, dude. It's just me, bro. You fucking sound like a pathetic incel. Hey, dude, you sound fucking pathetic, bro. Stop doing this, man. Move out of your parents' basement. Move out of your fucking parents' basement, you fucking loser. Alright, so continuing on, um, <clears throat> so, uh, that, that's so weird. Hey, don't call this number again or I'm calling the police. Hey, hey, I'm calling the police, bro. Stop calling this number, you fucking loser. Hey, no, stop calling this. Alright, well... Believe me, it's not going to ring again. Uh, and I'm going to do an extensive, extensive analyzation and, uh, you know, continue this lecture on New Mexico food. And nobody is going to stop that. No one. And why would you want to? I got to stop him from doing the call. What the fuck is wrong? No, you're not stopping me, kid. It's fucking the saddest thing I've ever seen. I hung out with that fucking pedo Poseidon once three years ago, bro. We're not all in the same middle school. Like, get a fucking life. This has nothing to do with him. You can't figure that out. That kid has never read a book in his life. This is the furthest thing from piss boy Poseidon. Get the fuck away from me, you fucking losers. You're committing felonies across state lines. I swear to God, my boss works for the fucking, is a lawyer for the FBI, you stupid shits. You could probably figure that out. <laughs> like, dude, imagine risking felonies harassing somebody across state lines. Like, what are you doing? You, you must, they, they must have a, nothing to lose. The super incel has nothing to lose. Girls and boys, watch out for the super fucking incel because he has nothing to lose and he's willing to risk it all to try to stop somebody that's not an incel doing their own thing. I guess this guy really wished he could teach about Santa Fe. I guess he, he can't. And so that really hurts his feelings. Boo fucking who. But, you know, guess what? I may have raised my voice for a second there. Uh, I have no idea. They're 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 king of the incels. They're they're the exact opposite of me, I guess. They're piss boy pedo Poseidon. Uh, he's the only one that uh, has done everything in his power to try to prevent me from live streaming. And how successful is he at that? Not at all, is he? Uh, so that's all I can say. Him and his fucking little incel mods. All right, so uh, on the board here, I have blue corn pancakes. Now, uh, yellow may be corn's dominant color, but New Mexicans look to true blue. Blue corn, long grown in northern New Mexico as a native staple crop, is, rever is revered for its earthy taste and many nutrients. Don't let the healthy part scare you off. One of the best ways to experience blue corn is in pancakes slathered with real butter and drizzled with syrup. At Santa Fe's Telecote Cafe, uh, you can get a stack at all hours of the day. I've actually been there, Telecote Cafe. 
This next place, I also have been there. The first two places, I've been there. I actually owe the Owl Bar <laughs> some money. <clears throat> but the Owl Bar is where you want to go to get a green chili cheeseburger. Uh, the Foodnetwork.com uh, listed as one of the nation's top cheeseburgers. And I can tell you, personally, uh, if you don't like hot food, it's not a good burger. I love cheeseburgers, but I did not love this cheeseburger, and it burned my lips. It burned my little lips, the green chilies. But in New Mexico, they have one state food, and it's the green chili cheeseburger. Uh, it started in the 1940s at the Owl Bar, uh, a place to uh, Hungry working scientists requested more than just bar snacks for the evening, and with one grill and local produce, the green chili cheeseburger was born. Uh, so actually, the uh, scientists that... Uh, out there at the uh, Los Alamos National Laboratories were responsible for the green chili cheeseburger. All right, up next we have pozole. Now I know about Mexican food and uh, in Arizona they have menudo. And oh, we, I didn't even change the slide, did I? I didn't show that, the, well, there's the green chili cheeseburger that I talked so much about, right? All right, so then up next we have pozole, too. Third. Well, Mr. G, with a donation through Street Elements, HTTP. I've actually, these first four items I can tell you that I've had. Um, according to Food Network, because I have had pozole. Uh, it's similar to menudo, almost exactly. Uh, but pozole, New Mexican pozole is a hominy studded chili stew. So both pozole and menudo both have hominy in it. Uh, it's comforting at any time of the year. It's common uh, after hangovers. Uh, it's especially beloved in Santa Fe's chilly winter. Uh, Roberto Cordova's family recipe, especially what the food of our grandmothers are what drive Casa Chimayo. The red chili pozole is some of the best around. Fiery red and studded with pork and white hominy. The restaurant's menu goes deep on tradition. Their enchiladas and calabacitas are worth an order to do. Uh, we'll learn about calabacitas in a couple minutes here. All right, up next we have the breakfast burrito. And the breakfast burrito was actually invented in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, believe it or not. And a lot of people don't argue that as well. Um, <clears throat> according to uh, foodnetwork.com, uh, just make a burrito out of hash browns and eggs, right? Not so fast. At Golden Pride, the formula for delicious starts with a secret recipe for a fluffy flour tortilla that's topped with scrambled eggs, hash browns, cheese, and green chili. Uh, wrap it up and you have a handheld meal that satisfies like no donut ever could. The chili is actually hot, the cheese gooey, the eggs fluffy, and the hash browns just the Additions like bacon are popular, but sometimes the basic recipe is just right. So that's the official breakfast burrito of New Mexico. So New Mexico is known for their chilies. I'm sorry I got all upset there, right? I mean, earlier, a couple minutes ago. Because I'm having so much fun now. <laughs> but yeah, it sucked that I got all angry right before this, but I'm, I'm happy now because I enjoy doing this. That's why I do it. You know, like a, a lot of those fucking garbage pill kids, they, they're trying to be the next big thing. They're, they think they're like, they're all like. The amount of people that I'm reaching or. You know, of course, I would like to reach a large audience, but I generally enjoy doing this. All right. I learn and I teach and, I, and everybody's happy. OK. All right. Chili Rarinos. So the green chili is really popular and chili Rarinos is one of the most popular dishes. It's no donuts. It's a vegetable. No, it's something else quite amazing. A chili Rarino is a cheese stuffed chili pepper dipped in batter and fried until crispiness. That's okay because just one Rolino from Prasaz will satisfy and cure any craving for spice and fiery things. So if you like spicy food, uh, chili Rolinos, and those are good on the bar. That's the only time I've had it at a uh, New Mexico bar. The farm that I worked on and worked at in New Mexico uh, was in Ribera, New Mexico, and um, they're known to have a, a diner that has the best pie in the world. 
and also um, what what else? Oh, there's two bars that we went to there, and they have chili rellenos at the little dive bars. All right, um, up next we have carne avocada, carne avocada, avocada. So carne means meat in Spanish, so it's a meaty dish, and. Uh, Adovocada is uh, pork too, so pork meat. Slow cooked port, pork in red chili sauce, carno adovada, is an unassuming dish with impressive depth. There is no better place to experience the luxurious flavor than at Mary and Tito's north of downtown Albuquerque. Velvety, velvety red sauce consisting of little more than pureed chilies and salt cloaks chunks of pork in a warm embrace. The pork can barely withstand a nudge from a fork before melting into shreds. This family recipe played a large part in earning the restaurant a James Beard Foundation Award, making this cafe a destination for chili heads. It's funny that JR called right before those, those guys called. And he's like friends with some crazy stalker dude. <clears throat> You're watching JR? Get a life. Use your own channel. You're not, you stop competing with me. All right, up next we have red chili cheese enchiladas. Uh, Northern New Mexico stacks its enchiladas, but at Chope's in the South La Mesa, New Mexico, the enchiladas are rolled around in a hefty cheese filling. Then they're lined up and sauced, sauced with some of the most vibrant red chili sauce you'll ever see. Chope's whole menu is excellent. They have Rolinos there, but you might never have a better enchilada than this one, made so simply that you taste each component as they meld into a perfect symphony. I think that was a shout out to Santa Fe Symphony. Uh, like I said, the Santa Fe Opera and the Santa Fe Symphony are uh, two really um, uh, world-renowned uh, things. All right, up next we have uh, red chili pork tamales. All right, to many tamales are a holiday food. Make them in one epic batch to give out to your family and eat while the weather's cool. But at El Modorero, you'll find the biggest and best tamales all year long. The local go-to is the pork tamale smothered in red chili. A combo of three could satisfy even two of the hungriest friends with ease. Be prepared for a line and only a few tables to dine at El Mundo Cafe. All right. Up next. Bot said, Mr. G with a donation through Street Elements, HTTPS colon slash slash Street Elements dot com slash MRG underscore up. We got the Fredo Pry and the Blue Corn Tortilla. We talked about the uh, Blue Corn Tortilla. So they have Frito Pies in Texas, but uh, Frito Pies are popular everywhere. Uh, Texas and Santa Fe both lay claim to Frito Pie. Each side has its arguments and documentation, but at Espanola's El Parasol, the answer is who cares? Everyone, even Texans, enjoy the crispy and salty corn chips blanketed in red chili sauce and topped with beans, ground beef, cheese, and lettuce. It's messy, filling, and decadent. Start with a fork, but switch to a spoon when the chips begin to wilt to fully reveal the, that what is to reveal and it's so wrong of its kind of creation. Now that's awesome. The, the, uh, those are awesome uh, chili pies. I haven't had one of those in a while. Uh, you can actually make those. Go to any 7-Eleven, open a can of Fritos, and go to the free chili, free cheese, fill it up. All right, uh, up next we have blue, blue corn tortillas. Uh, earthy, textured, and nutritious, blue corn is beloved staple crop in northern New Mexico. The best way to show it off is in a simple tortilla, eaten with a meal or wrapped around taco fillings at Santa Fe's The Shed. I've ate there. Each tortilla is inky dark with great chewy texture and enough flavor to make them appealing with simple butter and salt to season them. This would be blue heaven indeed. So you generally see these blue uh, tortillas with uh, enchiladas because they're very hearty. Uh, so it's good to have like a lot of cheese on the inside, a lot of filling on the inside. All right. Up next, <clears throat> we have bizcochitos. Now, uh, bizcochito, uh, anything with ito at the end of it in Spanish is 
generally means that it's a cookie or it's small. So the state cookie of New Mexico is the Biscochito, and they're related to Sandy's, but they're so much better. At Golden Crown Panaderia, which means bakery, uh, near downtown Albuquerque, the recipe starts with flour shortening. They add a little cinnamon, anise, and sugar. Chris and Pratt Morales bakes tens of thousands of these little treasures every holiday season uh, for all the adorning fans. So those are those little cinnamon cookies that are really good around uh, Christmas time. Biscochitos are what they're called. All right, uh, up next we have the last of the blue corn tortilla. This is blue corn tortilla with egg. Now it's a stacked blue corn tortilla with egg. According to uh, foodnetwork.com, why roll in easy filling and make tidy stacks? Savor the northern New Mexico way at El Bruno's in Cuba along the 550, Cuba, New Mexico. It doesn't get any better than their recipe with the blue corn tortillas, cheese, and one fried egg on top. Not quite a breakfast dish. These enchiladas show off their earthy texture from the blue corn with chili sauce that softens the whole plate into a fork-friendly meal. Well, I've actually used to eat, eat enchiladas and, and eggs a lot, and uh, it's really common. So the one uh, main thing in, the, in all of New Mexico cuisine, and it's New Mexican food. It's not Mexican food. It's not a Mexican food. And the most important uh, ingredient in all of New Mexican food is the green chili. So flame-roasted green chilies. In the late New Mexican summer, the aroma of roasted chilies begins to permeate New Mexico air. The roastings done in big metal rotating bins fired with propane torches at nearly every grocery store and farm across the state. Once each 30 pound stack is blistering black, the often still warm chilies are dumped into the back of a container for peeling or selling whole to patient customers. Yes, you can buy a sack all for yourself and it's worth it. Find chilies roasting at places like the fruit basket and more. So yeah, uh, they do roast those uh, at every um, grocery store in uh, New Mexico. And things are so spread out in New Mexico. Like I said, two thirds of the roads are unpaved. Uh, it's really country. You know, a lot of times there's only a gas station every 200, 300 miles. Uh, it's the fifth largest state in the United States. The only states larger than New Mexico are California, Texas, uh, Alaska, and Montana. So yeah, it's a large state. It's larger than Arizona, but um, it's also the second poorest state in the United States as well. Okay, so uh, up next we have, uh, this is popular throughout Latin America. These are uh, sopapillas. Uh, sopapillas, uh, they look like pillows and they taste like fried bread. Sopapillas are something truly New Mexican. To craft them, simply and savory dough batter is dropped into a deep fire, producing puffed up creations either eaten with the main course or slathered with honey as the sweet finale. At La Cocina, they're nearly the size of pillows and light as clouds. Enjoy them with any or all the classic New Mexican menu items uh, from this restaurant with a view. So I've had these as well, sopapillas. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I think I am, actually. All right, up next, oh my God, I used to eat these at, this at Taco Cabana every day. This was like the cheapest thing to get at Taco Cabana. And it's huevos rancheros. Huevos rancheros. Now, practically ubiquitous, ubiquitous at brunch around the world, huevos rancheros actually originated near the Texas-Mexico border, where locals sauced their eggs and corn tortillas with salsa. Here in New Mexico, the proper sauce choice is chili sauce, red or green. And at Parillas in Albuquerque, green is the only answer worth considering. Parillas green is the stuff of le legend, rich and fiery, yet immensely flavorful. Order a half plate and your morning plans do not involve a happy food coma. Okay, travelnetwork.com. All right, um, up next we have red chili sauce. So uh, a lot of New Mexico cuisine is about the green chili sauce. Uh, they have red chili sauce and green chili sauce. This is the red chili sauce. 
The green chili sauce is actually red too, but it's a different shade of red. So the red chili sauce, the sauce is so simple yet so flavorful. Dried red chili pods are soaked until soft, then blended with water to a desired texture, salted and simmered. There is something about the red chili at Cecilia's Cafe in Albuquerque that lures folks back time and time again. Perhaps it is the endorphins produced by eating spicy foods. The red chili is served over burritos and breakfast dishes or just in a bowl with pinto beans. It makes both your toes and edges of your mouth curl up in pleasure. I can guarantee you the hottest food I ever had was in New Mexico and the spiciest food and it made me hiccup and it was at a big dinner and everybody was laughing their fucking asses off. I was at a big dinner and I'm like, and all of a sudden, hey, uh, <laughs> and everybody started laughing their asses off. Then this one guy that like was always trying to compete with me, he started like fake hiccuping too. And I was just like, I'm like, I'm really hiccuping. Uh, so the green chili sauce, we went over the red chili sauce. The green chili sauce, it's not necessarily red, but it's not necessarily green either. You've probably seen this sauce at Mexican restaurants wherever you live. Uh, only a few places do green chili sauce that stands alone, with fiery heat and a minimum of sauce thickeners. Uh, chili Nirvana can be found northwest of Albuquerque at Sadie's, where the best iteration of the restaurant's mini sauces is interesting. The vegetarian green chili sauce, the chilies are allowed to blossom into full potency without the richness of meat to distract from them. And the thickened broth base is gluten-free as a bonus. All right, so uh, that was the green chili sauce. I mean, that's the hotter of the sauce. Uh, so there's red chili sauce and green chili sauce. And basically, you have to choose between a red chili or a green chili uh, when you're in New Mexico. And uh, they're, they're real serious about that, too. It's either red chili or green chili. But uh, one thing uh, that they do with pizzas there is they'll cover half the pizzas with red chili and the other half of the pizza with... Purple chilies, no, with green chilies, obviously. Uh, so yeah, green chili on pizzas. Burgers are already an acceptable place for chili, so why not pizza? Dion's is the state's fam 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 favorite family-friendly pizza joint. There's a few locations throughout. And the chefs are happy to liberally cover your pie with a zesty chili. The best combination and most popular is green chili, though chili goes especially well with sweetness of a Hawaiian pie, too. The heat is tempered by the cheese, but it's still warm enough to make locals smile. So I actually cook pizza here. I'm going to cook a pizza tonight and I'm going to slice up some peppers and put them on top at the end too. All right, so that's green chili on pizza. Do you have just a few more here? So you guys have had chili and chocolate. Uh, it's really popular in New Mexico and I have had it before. Um, I could tell you a story about St. Elizabeth's Shelter. I could, uh, I've mentioned that a lot. I think the first class that I taught in New Mexico, I told all about that and about the Occupy camp. Oh, I want to actually uh, see, you know, hate is going to hate, but I'm still going to do my thing. This is going to be on my second channel right here. We're gonna be, I should have recorded earlier. Maybe a short 10 minutes. All right, so uh, chili and chocolate. So, and an unassuming storefront near the freeway are the best handmade chocolates in town. Uh, chocolate Cartel was founded by two brothers who wanted to share awesome chocolate with their home state. The filled chocolates come in various flavors, including espresso and smoked red chili. Those spicy squares are dusted with chili powder to warm your tongue and uh, to warm your tongue of the warmth ahead. Broaden the sweet experience with spicy chocolate bars and gelato from the case near the door. Okay, so they sprinkle uh, the chili pepper on the top to warn your tongue what's happening. And uh, that makes sense because the first time I've had uh, chili and chocolate, I, you know, was kind of disappointed, you know. And I, like, what the hell, you know? Like, that's not a Hershey bar, you know? That's not what I like. But, uh... But yeah, chili and chocolate, it's very common in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it's becoming popular worldwide, too, I've noticed. All right, earlier in the lecture, we mentioned calabacitas. And if you're watching this on YouTube, give me a thumbs up because I'm the fucking bomb, yo. All right, you too. All right, but anyways, you're seeing behind the scenes here. All right, uh, calabacitas. So, 
uh, Calabacitas. Uh, I'm from South Texas, and I've lived a lot of places uh, where there's lots of Mexican food. And I'll admit, Calabacitas is not familiar to me. Uh, but apparently, according to FoodNetwork.com, uh, vegetable sides vary across the country. In the Midwest, you have frozen peas, corn, and carrots. In the South, they enjoy corn and lima beads as succotash. Here in the desert Southwest, things get a bit spicier. Zucchini, corn, and green chilies combine in a sweet hot medley called calabacitas. On the Santa Fe Plaza, where I've been many times, you'll find the Plaza Cafe, where I've been many times, uh, which has served generations of locals and tourists alike. When you eat the restaurant's calabacitas, it might just be the first time you finish a vegetable side uh, before you start your main course. So apparently calabacitas is a vegetable side and their Plaza Cafe, which is located on the square, uh, which isn't an expensive place. I've ate there many times. Um, it's like a coffee shop, but uh, I, I never tried the calabacitas, I'll admit. All right, up next, um, which is a few more food, uh, we have the green chili apple pie. And um, I did go uh, in Rivera, New Mexico. They had a place uh, that's known for the best apple pie west of the Mississippi. And this was on their menu, the green chili apple pie. I went there uh, with the farm. It was right near the farm that I worked on. So we would sometimes go there with a group of people. Uh, we would eat lunch or breakfast, and then we would all get a slice of pie. And some people did get this pie. I remember uh, particularly this big guy that worked on the farm. Uh, he actually did order the green chili apple pie. And he said he liked it, too. So I was my lips were already burned from the burger, so... Uh, I kind of gave up on, on green chilies. Uh, but according to foodnetwork.com, uh, chili is in all foods in New Mexico, including dessert. Take a lovely drive south of Albuquerque to a hamlet, quite literally called Pie Town, to experience one of the best local takes. At the Pie O'Near, I told you that they got pie in New Mexico. Sit at a counter, old fashioned counter, advertising the meatloaf special and dig a fork into a warm slice of apple green chili pinon pie. The chili is surprisingly mild, adding just a hint of flavor of heat to what is otherwise an American classic. At least three spots in Pie Town in central New Mexico, including the spot that I'm talking about, uh, serves this um, green chili apple pie. <laughs> so, if you want your green chili apple Uh, Northern Mexico, if I was to ever take a trip somewhere, it might be uh, to Northern New Mexico. I would have to fly into Santa Fe. But even then, uh, it would be it would be a, uh, a stretch, and I, I would see no reason for it. So um, up next, we have up last and certainly not least, uh, we have green chili stew. Now, uh, it gets really cold in Santa Fe, the coldest weather I've ever, uh, New Mexico in general. Uh, the coldest weather I've ever experienced was in northern New Mexico. Green chili stew is something that sounds really good uh, for cold weather. And I have had this, and I do remember it. And it was spicy, and it was delicious. I think this is what actually gave me the hiccups, actually. Uh, but warming in the winter, sinus clearing in the summer, good and spicy stews can do it all the time, anytime. Green chili stew across the state. But many folks had, had to frontier's version in high regard. It's sold by the bowl, but most diners first experience this chili nirvana by having it slathered over their burritos and enchiladas. It's genius for restaurant and convenient for chili fans slowly warming up to a whole bowl. So yeah, Santa Fe, uh, I have that there too. I actually have that in Ribera. But yeah, those were the uh, foods of uh, the great state of New Mexico. I think this lecture uh, ended up uh, it only uh, effed out maybe once or twice, and uh, then it ended up uh, lasting uh, almost uh, an hour uh, and a half here, about two hours. Uh, thank you all for joining the class today, uh, especially Mrs. J and Countrymen. Um, I hope all of you had a uh, wonderful uh, day today, and I hope you guys have a great weekend as well. Uh, this was all about New Mexico. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Um, I know I did. Uh, like I said, if people ask me what my favorite town is, I would say Santa Fe. 
And my, my favorite state other than Hawaii is New Mexico. And one of the best places I've ever been, a great place for a writer or an artist, is Santa Fe. So if you're ever looking for Mr. G and you can't find me here in Hawaii, Santa Fe, New Mexico would be a good place to look. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, I'm going to play the New Mexico State song and show you uh, some great New Mexico landmarks. Uh, there will be class tomorrow on Saturday. I'm going to be giving, uh, normally I take the Sabbath off uh, for a day of rest, uh, but I will be giving a brief class in this classroom, uh, reading the Bible and just going a couple uh, stories in the Gospels. We'll just go over a summary of all, um, all four Gospels and uh, we'll decide... Uh, we'll just look out some differences and do that. So join me tomorrow afternoon for you guys, morning for me, uh, and uh, to do some Bible study here in this room. It'll be fun. I'll make it fun. I'll make sure to uh, have uh, some good things going with that. And uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, everybody have a good day today. And uh, enjoy the New Mexico State Anthem. If you're watching this on uh, YouTube, if you're not watching this live, uh, don't forget to uh, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and whatever state your state is, check out the playlist and find your own state, unless you have something against learning, you know, right? All right, uh, here's the uh, New Mexico State Anthem. I hope uh, all of you enjoyed my lesson, and uh, stay tuned on Monday, we're going to learn all about Nevada, or as they say in Nevada, Nevada. No matter what